The University of Iowa has a very long and prolific legacy of providing instrumentation for spaceflight missions, including to many of the planets in our solar system and even spacecraft that have left the realm of influence of our sun or the heliosphere. And so we have this great privilege of being one of uh, the storied institutions that are involved in spaceflight instrumentation and all the scientific discoveries that come along with that. The University of Iowa has been you know, in the business of space physics research for as long as that has existed, going all the way back to uh, Professor James Van Allen, who famously discovered the Earth's radiation belts. More recently, we're working on a mission called Tracers, which looks to understand how energy, mass, and momentum coming from the sun connect into near-Earth space. And my part of that is an instrument called MAGIC, which will make very precise measurements of the magnetic field, which is basically steering and controlling that connection. Tracers is a NASA SMEX mission, or Small Explorer mission. It's a two-satellite mission, and they're going to a, a region of the Earth called the cusp. In that region, a process that we know about called magnetic reconnection shoots a burst of particles that come down along the Earth's magnetic field line. So at low altitude, we can see the image of that process. The main question that we're really interested in is this, is reconnection purely a, a time varying phenomena? If it's temporal, that is it's changing in time, the whole thing sort of shifted, in our case, northward, because we're going to be looking at the northern cusp. It's just spatial. If I fly through with a second satellite, everything should be exactly in the same place. My research all starts with the solar wind. So my research is focused on understanding how that wind is accelerated, how it evolves, and how it interacts with the planets and moons in our solar system. This is a, uh, a mock-up of one of the instruments that we're going to fly on tracers, the one that I'm in charge of. It measures uh, electrons. Uh, the question that we're trying to answer with tracers is how the solar wind interacts with the Earth's environment and how it affects uh, the Earth's environment and how energy is transferred from the solar wind into the Earth's environment. Um, ultimately, that has relevance to our everyday existence because uh, space weather can affect our technological systems uh, and even our power systems on the ground. Near-Earth space is kind of like a big electrical circuit. You have electrons that come deep from near-Earth space, they bang into the top of our atmosphere, they close in the atmosphere, and then they go back out. And it's all controlled by the magnetic field of the Earth, the North Pole and the South Pole. So magnetic field measurements are essential to understand this really interesting interplay of energy, mass, and momentum between the Earth and the Sun. Some of the best magnetic field measurements are taken by an instrument called a fluxgate magnetometer, which was originally designed as a military sensor, you know, for finding landmines, for sensing submarines. We use them for civilian applications, like trying to understand currents and electricity in near Earth space. So part of what we do at the University of Iowa is we are rediscovering and improving how to make these very precise magnetic field measurements. Many of the giant planets have an intense magnetic field around them, much greater than the one that we have at Earth. And so by studying the magnetic field at other planets, we can understand what might happen in very extreme space weather events that we might see here on Earth. Uh, so we can look at really high acceleration of particles, we can look at sudden losses of particles in these giant planet magnetospheres, and then make a parallel to understand how those basic plasma physics principles could apply here to our, our near-Earth space. I like to study ultraviolet light, and that's really important because this is the energy that really excites and, and creates new conditions in the universe, both within galaxies and outside of them. I'm a part of a project called Fireball, um, and it's looking to understand how matter outside of galaxies ultimately comes together to form stars and all the stuff that's found within galaxies. And we are using a ultraviolet telescope that we're flying on a balloon. It's like a, it's like an observatory size telescope, a one meter size telescope um, to fly at the edge of space to get access to ultraviolet light. The University of Iowa is one of a fairly small group of universities where undergraduates, graduates, postdoctoral fellows, scientists, engineers, all work together to create you know, physical hardware that we put into space to make cutting edge measurements. So one of the things that I really enjoy about teaching here is having these big interdisciplinary groups, 
people with very different uh, levels of experience all working together on these you know, hands-on space projects. Students are integral to my entire research portfolio and most of what we do here at the University of Iowa. Uh, we give them training in terms of working on some of these CubeSat missions, on some of these uh, sounding rocket missions, which are shorter duration, so they can go through and work on a full mission in the time period of one undergraduate cycle or in the course of their PhD degree. So those are really, really powerful uh, training uh, vehicles that we can provide for students. And in return, students end up being the powerhouse behind our most exciting research. The University of Iowa recently put a serious investment in new faculty, new infrastructure, and we're basically staffing up to do you know, cutting edge research in the future. So if you have students, if you know someone that wants to get involved in this field, we would love to have you as an undergraduate, as a graduate student, you know, in whatever capacity makes sense.